Indian author, activist, and philosopher Vandana Shiva is one of the many people in Rio this week calling for a paradigm shift in how countries practice sustainability, one that puts the rights of Mother Earth and future generations above profit and corporate control of the planet's resources. In a recent article published in the Asian Age, Shiva writes. None of us are immune to the crisis or the response to it. None of us are bystanders. We are all immersed in processes that are either threatening the planet and our own future, or finding creative ways to shape a sustainable and just future. FSRN's Salim Rizvi recently sat down with Vandana Shiva to discuss environmental struggles in her own country and what she expects of the Rio Plus 20 summit. What is the current state of、uh, environment struggle? Because you've been attached to the grassroots in India. The planet is in a much deeper crisis than when I started. Our big problem was the forests of the Himalaya. Today we have climate change, ocean, ocean acidification, nitrogen fertilizer pollution on scales you can't imagine. The disappearance of species,、uh, and worse, the machinery that has caused all this, both the technological as well as the economic machinery and the paradigms that drive them, having. No capacity to stop on their own. That's the crisis. It is not that the grassroots movements are not strong. I think they've never been stronger because the crisis is deeper. Every inch of India today is an ecological struggle. It's also a struggle for justice and rights to resources. And in India, we cannot separate these. You cannot separate the issue of sustainability from the issue of justice. From the issue of access to resources and from the issues of peace, because wherever there is a resource grab for this limitless appetite machinery, there is a resource war, and that is why I am now talking about making peace with the earth, and it is now a survival imperative. With the、uh, economic growth India is witnessing and it's continuing, so、uh, do you think the sustainable development is、uh, less of a challenge now that the、uh, activists like you are working and move, grassroots movements are also increasing and picking up? Unfortunately, grassroots movements have never ever been criminalised that they we are they are under a high growth India.、Um, this high growth is hiding a lot. It is hiding the fact that in the same period while India. Had high growth, India became the capital of hunger. Every fourth Indian is hungry. Every second child is wasted, and stunted. That's half our future. Their future is locked. A quarter million Indian farmers have committed suicide. This is not a shining India. But worse, we are the strongest democracy of the world. I take pride in it. I participate in it. I shape it. And I'm ashamed that our Prime Minister, just a few weeks ago, gave an interview to the Science Magazine. To say the anti-GM movement, which is the states of India, 13 of them have said, "You will not impose Monsanto's agenda on us. We are a federal structure. The Constitution gives us a right to ban this stuff." But he says the anti-GM movement and the anti-nuclear movement is a foreign hand. So I had to write a piece to say the foreign hand in India today is the Prime Minister himself working for the Monsantos for the nuclear lobby. Unfortunately, fortunately, both democracy. And people's rights are under severe threat, but I do not think we will ever give up. We are going to rescue our democracy, our heritage, and the fact that our people have to have a future. Our future is not for the looters of our minerals and the dumpers of waste after Bhopal, after Fukushima. The idea the worst polluting hazardous industry can be dumped on India is just a very undemocratic idea. What do you think of the、uh, economic growth, which、uh, now is, seems to be depending on nuclear power plants? Also, well, the fact that the U.S. signed an agreement with India on the nuclear deal was largely for its businesses, for its General Electrics and、uh, its Kaisers, who want to bring nuclear to India while they are not able to open nuclear here because、uh, it's just stricter.、Um, everywhere where there's a nuclear plant. People didn't have to be taught. They watched the TV. They saw they're building a nuclear plant here. This is what happened in Fukushima. We don't want this stuff. The most illiterate of villagers rose in Hisar, in Haripur, in Madhya Pradesh, in Kudumkulam, in Tarapur, everywhere across the country. In Miti Vidhi, in、uh, Gujarat, in Jaitapur, where the biggest nuclear power plant is to be set up, and. 
while I'm talking to you right now, the biggest intense fight is between the nuclear lobby, a government it has captured, and the fishermen and local villagers of Tamil Nadu saying no to the nuclear plant. What about the hopes from Rio uh, conference? Well, you know, Rio was a very important conference in 20 years ago. India played a very important role. Unfortunately, India is today willing to be a second fiddle to the United States, which wants to dismantle Rio. We are a civilization based on compassion and sharing. And the idea of Sarve Bhavantu Sukhana, that let the whole world be happy, you cannot sacrifice that very, very open, generous civilization for a short-term growth model that is failing all around us. If India is still 6%, it's going to be zero and then negative and then locked in debt. Like Europe, like America, a debt-creating economy cannot bring prosperity. That was author and activist Vadana Shiva speaking with FSRN's Salim Rizvi.